Isaiah chapter 22, Song of Solomon, the 22nd book of the Bible. The burden, and we've been reading a lot of burdens of the Valley of Vision. This will be looking to Jerusalem, Judah. What aileth thee now? <laughs> what, what a statement by God. What aileth thee now? I mean, you realize God every single day listens to people all the way back from Adam and Eve to today. All the people that God got to listen to, saved and unsaved. I mean, the unsaved cry out to God. What hell is he now? <laughs> but you know what? That's not the attitude that God has. What hell is he? <clears throat> For the Christian, the Bible says, come boldly before the throne of grace. Jesus says, ask, seek not. James says, pray. But Judah in their sins, in their agony, in their troubles, as we'll see in Jeremiah, it's not what ails thee now. Because you know what? I'm so sick and tired of your sins. I'm tired to deal with your sins. That's the same thing with a lot of the seeing church. What's bothering you guys now? You're rich. You're great. You're wonderful. You have no need of nothing. What are you doing praying? Why are you praying for foolish things? I gotta imagine some of the prayers that the lad to see in church is praying to God. It's wrong. What ail thee now that thou art wholly gone up to the housetops? And we've looked at the housetops and we've already seen it. It's the worship of false gods. They're trying to get as high as they can without God. High places. Peter's up on the housetop and, and he's praying and he falls asleep. And that's where he sees the heavenly vision. But we know Peter's not seeking a fallen God. As Judah is. I mean, it's funny. Holy go up to the housetop. And if you look at one of the, the famous songs of up on the housetop. Click, click, click. I just found old Saint Nick. There are more Christian children today are looking for Santa Claus more than they're looking for Jesus Christ. They're going up to pray. Who are they praying to? I'm not saying the entire nation of Judah is, is seeking a false god. I'm not saying all the church, all the church, all the Christians are seeking false god. But many, many. I mean, read what God says about the land they see in church age. That, that, now watch verse 2. That thou art full of stirs, alarm. Alarm is, you know, nuclear sirens, air horns, air raid, warning, trouble, coronavirus, fires, Republican. These people, those people, they're going to drop a bomb on us. Oh, we got all these people coming. We got the, this military. Oh, the shots are going to kill us. This is going to kill us. Food additives is going to kill us. The air we breathe is going to kill us. Just full, full of stir. Here's a problem. There's a problem. Here's a problem. Everywhere there's a problem, problem, problem. That's what it means. And tumultuous city. That means disorder, confused. <clears throat> well, do we lock people up, coronavirus? Or do we put them six feet? Do we make them wear one? Now is you make you make them wear one mask, or now it's two masks. But we'll give them a shot, but they still need to wear the mask. Do we wear the mask while we're walking down the street? 
Do we wear the mask while we're driving the car? No one else is in the car but you. Well, what's going to happen now we have a new president? Well, these people from this group, they're, they're over here, they're ransacking the Capitol. This group over here is on the West Coast, they're burning things down. And a, a, a youth this was just charged with, with uh, killing six people. And one of them was pregnant. And, you know, what's going to happen with Mexico with the wall? And global warming. Oh, we, forgot, we forgot about global warming. What happened to global warming? We do this, we do that, do this, do that, do that. We don't know what to do. Oh, watch out for the, for the, for the hornets. Here comes the hornets. <laughs> Oh, man, all our plastic bags that was the answer to the paper bag is now all the, 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 the marine animals are now eating the, the plastic bags. And we're in trouble. we got to go back to the paper bags. I remember when plastic bags was the answer to the pollution in the trees of the paper bags. I remember that big switch over. The world's going to be saved by the plastic bag. Now... We got plastic and it does not deteriorate in the, in the dumps. Oh, no. What's science done? Science is, oh, we got another problem. Oh. I mean, watch out for the dragon spacecraft. It's going to come back and may land on your head or your property. I mean, you know, they still got things falling, falling from the skies. It was supposed to crash off in the Atlantic Ocean. It was supposed to crash in the Atlantic Ocean, but it ended up in the Gulf. Well, it ended up on top of your house. Up on the housetop again. All right, we got that. Everybody's in alarm. Everybody's in disorder. A joyous city. We are afraid. We're running from fear. We don't know where we're running, but run this direction, but run that direction. Go this way. And it's utter chaos. Yoo-hoo! It's party. The churches are closed, but the bars are open, but, you know, six feet. The government's giving us free money. Woohoo! That while you're losing your jobs... And people are, I guarantee people are taking that money foolishly using it. There's alarms, there's disorder, there's confusion, but they're, they're joyous. I had to read that verse a couple times, like, and I had to go to a couple commentators on that one. Two hours, two out of three stirs and tumultuous, that's not good, then joyous. You know, there are women today going to an organization and they're alarmed because it turned blue. And their whole life is in confusion and disorder because they're pregnant. They go in and they get an abortion and they come out joyful. There are marriages. There's the alarm. There's trouble. There's problems. There's an affair. And there's order and there's confusion. They go into a courtroom with lawyers and, and, the, and the judge says, all right, this marriage is disannulled. And they walk out joyous. By slain, the men, they've been killed. <coughs> By slain men are not slain with the sword. Nor dead in battle. So it's not wartime. There's death by other means. But there's alarm, there's disorder, there's confusion. It should be a time, to, is it war? No. And they're dying. And we've got an issue here. A lot of death certificates have been signed within the last year. Well, March of last year to now. Died of COVID-19, and that was not the reason. They don't know why. And then there are rumors and opinions that 
they died of COVID-19, but they really didn't die of COVID-19, but they're just trying to adjust the numbers. Well, what did they die of? And the media is starting to get back and to say, oh, people are dying by guns again. People are getting killed by guns in America. It ain't a battle. It ain't wartime. <laughs> Lester Roloff says about America, it's an insane asylum being run by the inmates. Amen to that. All thy rulers oh, are fled together. Where, where, where's our leaders? Where'd they go? They took a hike. The people you put your trust in instead of God took a hike. Isn't that kind of funny? We're ironic. We're, we're reading chapter 22. We go through each chapter. Some chapters take one or two or three of nights. Psalms 119 took us many nights. So as far as the Republican, where is Donald Trump? He's put it go. He's gone. Bye. Right. See ya. They are bound by the archers. Now that's not Donald Trump. They did not die by battle, but now here's archers who are part of a military and they have been bound, locked, tied, cuffed, in chains. An army has invaded, but the deaths were not by the army, and now the army has occupied, and they're taken into captivity, they're taken prisoners. What? Confusion, tumultuous, what is going on? <laughs> And then the media is reporting not the truth. The, 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 the leaders are not reporting the truth. And the rumors are not the truth. And the preachers are not preaching the truth. What's going on? Get in the Bible and read the truth. Don't you worry about COVID-19. The one of these days, Jesus Christ is going to come. And he's going to take us all out of here. And it, if he tarries, one day I'll be absent from the body and present with the Lord. I woke up this morning to serve the Lord. When the Lord's done with me, he'll call me home. When the Lord's done with the church, he'll call us all home. Are you going to take the, the shot? The... the, 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 uh, the uh, for the COVID-19? I don't know. I mean, if they make it a law, I'll take it. But right now, no. I'll wait to see what the side effects are. I mean, trust God, not man and not corporations. And all that are found, so some that weren't, they were not found. Some got away. MD are bound, chains, handcuffs, ropes, together, which had fled from far. When they gather them up, they put them. Therefore, said I, look away from me. I will weep bitterly. Now this is now this is not Jeremiah, but this is Jeremiah the weeping prophet. And I don't know if this is Isaiah speaking or God speaking. I'll be Isaiah. Isaiah comes to the point like Jeremiah. Oh man! And then Isaiah and Jeremiah would be like Jesus Christ, who wept over Jerusalem. wept over the people. You know, when they say wept over to Jerusalem, it'd be the people, not the city. Though the city would be destroyed, but all the people, you know, the church today, oh, the, the, the house of God, the church of God, it ain't about the building. It's about the people. And Jeremiah and Isaiah are weeping over the people 
There's destruction coming. Isaiah and Jeremiah are living amongst people. They see their sins open. Jeremiah says, as many as the streets in Jerusalem are the church buildings with their altars and all their nonsense. And God cannot and will not allow this to keep happening. And it's bringing both the prophets to tears. Now, though it's not written, it'll be written many, many, many years later by the Apostle Paul, but the wages of sin is death. Jeremiah and Isaiah see the death and destruction coming. Labor not to comfort me. <laughs> Don't even bother. Because of the spoiling of the daughters of my people, Israel. Isaiah is weeping over the people as Jesus wept over the city for the people. Isaiah is saying, when is it going to be enough? When is the cup going to be filled where God's going to say, that's it, you're done. In the prophet Jeremiah's time. For it is a day of trouble. And you can march that right over to Jacob's trouble. It is a day of trouble. And the treading down. That's being run over by horses. Run over by men. Run over by armies. A perplexity by the Lord God of hosts. In the valley of vision. This chaos. This loss and the victory over the enemies is brought by God because the sins of Israel. Breaking down the walls and crying to the mountains. That's Revelation chapter 6. This is going to happen again. Jeremiah is going to write to us the book of Lamentations, the absolute destruction with the walls tore down. This happened 70 AD. Israel will not learn their lesson. And Elam bared the quiver, that's what holds the arrows. With chariots of men and horsemen and cur uncovers the shield. Get ready for battle. Break out the shields. Break out the arrows. Get the chariots ready. War is coming. And it shall come to pass that the choicest valleys shall be full of chariots. And valleys are, are where the seem to be where the battles were. It was a valley where David met Goliath. And when you read that story of David and Goliath, there was Israel on one mountain, and there were the Philistines on the other mountain, and the giant came down in the valley and cursed the gods of... And then David and Goliath met in the valley. And the horsemen shall set themselves in array at the gates of the city. And we read the time that, that David sins against Bathsheba. There's a day that the kings appointed to war. There were set days that the kings would go to war. I don't know if they marked it on their calendar, but hey, it's time for us kings to go to war. You know what keep America out of other people's troubles of other nations? Every time we started a war, we sent the president into battle. Except for one time, David went into battle with Israel. The one time that David did not go into battle is the time he committed adultery and, and mur adul adultery and murder. You read, the other, you read the other accounts of the wars. The kings were right there in their chariots in the battle. There was one war that the enemy said, hey, we're looking for a Pacific one king. And they came across Jehoshaphat. No, that's not the one. 
Turn around. That's not that's not the king. Be a lot different if you sent the leader of the nation into battle. That's you know, we're a Christian nation. We're a nation founded upon the Bible. Where is our leader of our country in Afghanistan? In the Bible, the kings were in the battle, and one time again, they said David was not there, and that's where he sinned his sins. Not where he was supposed to be. And he discovered the covering of Judah, God's people. And thou didst look in the, the day, in that day, uh oh, uh oh. But we're even looking at a period future future in that day to the armor of the house of the forest first Kings 7 2 and first Kings 10 17 Solomon built a, a house in the forest of Lebanon and this is this is a, a house this is an armory and I remember when I grew up in in New London Connecticut we, we moved to one section of Connecticut of New London and you could walk down it was, it was called the army the National Guard Army Harmony, harmony, can't say it. And if you go down there at the right time, I forget if it was the beginning of the month or the end of the month, but once a month they would get together. And if you went there at the right time, man, you, man, you got to see tanks, you got to see all the weapons, you got to see all the soldiers, all the vehicles. And if you were on the highway, I forget it was the beginning of the month or the end of the month, there would just be a line of National Guard vehicles. I mean. Tow, national car tow trucks, national car ambulances, national car jeep, national car. I mean, they're all going to practice or they're coming home from practice. This is what this this, this house in the board. It's where they kept the weapons. It's where they kept the armor. And you would, and this place would be heavenly armed. This is not the place to put the stuff in there and lock it up. No, you would have troops. Uh, I'm trying to think in David's time. Um, I can't think of the name of it right now. Ar no, not the Ars Um The garrison of the Philistine. That would be where the troops and where the, the armor stuff was. The garrison of the Philistine. That was another place. He had seen also the breaches. That's holes and broken and and cracks and all the bad places of the wall that you don't want. You walk up to the wall and it's broken down and there's holes and they're crumbling. That's where the breach is. See also the breach is plural of the city of David, Jerusalem, Zion. And there are many, somebody's not taking care of the city. You're not doing a very good job taking care of the city. They're saying right now from the Central America, there's thousands of, of people coming up. They're going to cross our border. If they cross our border, somebody's not watching our country. We have a breach between Mexico and Florida, uh, Florida, Mexico, United States, and Canada, and United States, we got a great big breach. We got a breach on the on the Pacific coast of America. We got a great breach on the Atlantic coast of America. Anybody could come in. The fact is that we have these great breaches, north, south, east, and west. That's where all the drugs are coming from. The breaches. It's where all these, these terrorists that come into this nation, people want to destroy this nation because of the breaches. You say, we don't, eat, we don't have no walls. That's a great big breach. There are many. And he gathered together the waters of the lower pool. You're interested in the reservoir and not the city. The little minor thing. And you have numbered the houses of Jerusalem. Here we go. 
and the houses have ye broken down to fortify the wall. So there's these breaches, many in the wall. And you're interested in these little, pretty little parts. And you see this breach here, and here's the Smith's house. And you tear the Smith's house to fix that breach. You got a stone wall. Tearing down one of the people's houses to fix, it's, not, it's a fix, but it ain't a complete fix. That's like getting somebody who's been run over on the highway by a Big Mac truck that's going 65 miles per hour. And you say, well, here, here's a Band-Aid. He needs more than a Band-Aid. He needs complete medical attention and time. These walls need complete, uh, not medical attention, they need complete construction attention. And they need time to do the job, not a quick fix. So they're tearing people's houses down to fix the wall. Eminent domain. But they're worried about the little pools. He made also the ditch between the two walls for water of the old pool. This is Hezekiah. Uh, you're making ditches for water, but the wall, but the walls got breaches in them. You got the animals in the barn. The doors are off the barn. The animals are running out and you're out there. Uh, do I want a red barn or a blue barn? With the doors laying on the ground. And the cows and the goats and the chickens and every animal you have are running all around. It's funny because, or I again, where I come from, Connecticut, Norwich area, and all that, you, you would have a, a time that you you would hear the police get called. The, the farmer's cows were out in the middle of the road, the highway. The fence broke somewhere. So you go over to, to the farmer, the dairy farmer, and say, uh, "Your animals are on the highway." Oh, really? Yeah. Th there's a big hole in the fence. There is. Okay. Do I want apple trees or do I want pear trees? Uh, sir, you got to worry about the, the fence. Uh, um, maybe if I get that little storage shed, I've always been wanting. No, fence. <laughs> Problem with the fence. But ye have not looked unto the maker thereof, God. Need have you specked on him that fashioned it long ago. That would be not only God the city, I mean God, the God of the people the city, but also who's built the wall. Got a problem with the wall, and you got a problem is your eyes are not on God. So your eyes are on everything but People are dying, going to hell. What kind of pews are we going to get? What? Should we get hamburgers or hot dogs? It's messed up. In that day, oh boy, here's that expression again. Did the Lord God of hosts call to weeping? That's what Isaiah is being that sign. And Jeremiah. And to mourning. Very upset. And baldness. And there would be a time that they would shave, they, they would shave and cut their hairs in mourning. And there's a point in the law that God told the priest, you're not to do that. And I forget if it's uh, Jeremiah or Ezekiel one time, it, it, it took, shave your head. Take one third of the hairs, fire, one third of the hair, and then. And to grind, to girding with sackcloth. 
Now, we saw Isaiah take sackcloth off. That sackcloth that Isaiah was wearing wasn't a fashion statement saying, woe is me for these people. You don't want to wear sackcloth. It's very uncomfortable. And it's good that potatoes have eyes because if they had mouth, they'd be complaining about being in sackcloth. I made it funny. Behold joy. Here comes the joy. We just seen the alert. We just seen the stir. We seen the tumultuous city. The wall is destroyed. They're not taking care of it right. And they're worried about little, little pool. And man, Joseph and his wife, Rebecca, just lost their, their house so they can fix the walls. And a, a widow named Hannah lost her house because they got to fix the wall. And there's an army getting ready to come. Now let's see the joyful part. Behold, joy and gladness, slain oxen. Oh, they're reaching out to God. Killing sheep. Oh, okay. They're, they're God. But God said, you didn't look to your maker. We're not done. Read the entire verse. So you guys study all the Bible. This guy's, all right, you know, I'm done. We're doing a Bible study. We're going verse by verse, chapter by chapter. I'm in no rush. And if, if, if the Lord comes and we don't finish Isaiah, I hope that when we do get the glory after the rapture, I hope we have a class. Everybody in this class, all right, what, what we're going to do, Lord? Hey, Isaiah, how you doing? What you going to do? We're going to leave off where you were doing Isaiah. All right, Isaiah's going to do the class. Sit back. And you're going to have many Christians in the Laodicean church, eh? They're going to be sitting in Isaiah's classroom like, what? What's he saying? What? You mean that guy over there that sat in church and, and he had the bumper stickers all over? You mean he was right? <laughs> I hope when we get the glory, I hope there's a special class on paganism. Now, all you, you teach, all you preachers, all that, look, and people that, that love your paganism, sit down in this classroom. Study to show thyself and prove unto God. Now, we're going to have our instructor come in in a moment. He's going to teach about paganism. Oh, hi, Stiley. How you doing? Uh, how you... What are you doing in this class? I'm the instructor. I'm here to teach you guys about your paganism. I tried to teach you on the earth, but you wouldn't listen. Jesus said, I got a class for you. Hey, hey all right, Jesus. Wouldn't it be bad for all the people that rebuked me about paganism? And God said, hey. Paganism class 101, instructor, Dr. Stiley William Hayward, with his many crowns. And I would walk in that classroom. Let's all throw our crowns at, if we had some of them, at Jesus. But since you wasted your paganism and didn't get no crowns, let's learn what's right. Hey, I'd rather not finish Isaiah and get to heaven and hopefully God would say, okay, Isaiah, you want to finish where he left off? How'd I get off on that? And behold, joy. I got joy. And gladness. Slain oxen. That was, that was a sacrifice to God. And killing sheep. That was a sacrifice to God. Eating flesh. Well, that was at the three feasts. Drinking wine. Let us eat and drink, for tomorrow we shall die. They're not sacrificing to God. They're having a barbecue. Come on, all the world's going to hell. We're having a Baptist fellowship. 
Go to all the world, preach the gospel. Well, this week we're gonna have a Baptist fellowship. We're gonna have, we're gonna have hamburger. We're gonna have we're gonna have potluck, and everyone come and have a good time. Who cares about that guy out there on the street trying to witness and it, it's beginning to rain? As long as it don't rain on our fellowship. Boy, if you knew only the timing that God laid this out. All the city is going to destruction and they're having hamburgers, hot dogs, and sheep. We got seconds if anybody didn't get enough. <laughs> You see why I put what we're reading on the church age too? I was in the church. My wife and I left. We They would cancel out Sunday evening service so we could have fellowship. <clears throat> we didn't play bingo. We played Jesus. I still don't remember how they did that. Because there was two S's. I don't care. Oh, I remember my wife and I, we were married on November 2nd. We picked a date. I mean, we were going to be married the next following year, but we wanted to get married right away. And this something, November 2nd, was a quick date. And November 2nd, after we were married, the, 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 the pastor of the church married us. Since it was not December 31st, I mean, excuse me, October 31st, Halloween, the church had the night that, that Lisa and I was married. And they weren't the church of the open door. So that's what they called themselves. It wasn't, it, I keep saying December 31st. It, <coughs> it wasn't October 31st, because that's Halloween. But on November 2nd, 1991, the church, the night, the day, the night that Lisa and I got married, they had a costume party. And they bragged because it wasn't Halloween, it was another night. Boy, have I seen what churches do for hollow for for holidays now? How did I get up on that one? And it was revealed in my ears by the Lord. <laughs> there, there's Isaiah. What Lord? <laughs> what did God sound like? That's what I want to know. I read the whole chat. What, what did God sound like? And, and the Bible says he sounds like a trumpet. He sounds like many waters. How do you get the sound of a trumpet? In the, uh, uh, Lord, whoa, hold on, man. I clean up my ear. Ooh, that went right all the way through. Surely this iniquity, verse 13, the fellowship, the partying, when there's destruction on the way. There's destruction coming to the church. Called apostasy. Called the devil's inside. And Jesus is outside. Shall not be purged from you. That's Israel. Till ye die, saith the Lord God of hosts. So death is coming. Death is coming and the church doesn't do nothing. All are welcome. Bite them to church. That won't save them. They come Sunday morning. <laughs> Seats are all full. And 15 minutes after the church service starts, the rapture happens, and those who didn't get saved, you didn't witness to, are still sitting in the pews after the Lord calls the church home. Going to church is not going to save your soul. Now, if you have witnessed to him properly on Saturday or Friday, whenever you go, whenever you, if you were to witness to him properly on your, the night you go witnessing and told them and they got saved on the night that you were witnessing and the rapture happened before Sunday, time to come to church. What if the rapture happens before Sunday? What if that guy gets an automobile accident between that day and Sunday morning, ends up in the hospital and dies? Well, he was going to come to church. Thus saith the Lord God of hosts, go get thee unto the treasurer. 
You know, a lot of times Jesus, we read about him in the treasury. That woman gave the two mites, she, they're in the treasury. Jesus walks in, makes a cord of whips, and, and all the coins and money is rolling across the floor. Isaiah, would you say, God, you want me to go to the treasurer? Okay. Even to Shibnia. Was Shibnia? God names names. This is a treasure, which is over the house, and say, this is a treasure. What hast thou here? And whom hast thou here? What's going on here? That thou hast hewed thee out a sceptre here. The guy's made a sceptre. He's healed out a sceptre. What's that? That's what Joseph R. R. Mead made. He healed out a sceptre, and he gave it to Jesus for a while. I mean, I can imagine, I mean, you can go over, supposedly, the Catholics will show, I don't think it's, but uh, imagine J Jesus, three days, three nights later, he's waiting for the women to show up. Imagine the, the, where Jesus really was buried. Imagine up on the wall it says, Jesus died here, didn't stay long. <laughs> I don't know, just... Boy, am I going up rabbit trails tonight. He makes a, a sceptre. Why? Because the military is coming. He sees, you know what he builds? He built a bomb shelter. And we'll see it in 2218 why he builds a bomb shelter. A bomb shelter is in the Bible. And people are spending money for such things today. As he he was out a sceptre on high, and that graveth an habitation for himself in a rock. He's built a sceptre. This is the treasurer of the temple. Why did you build the sceptre? Because I'm afraid. Behold, the Lord will carry thee away with a mighty captivity. You're not going to be in your bomb shelter. And will surely cover thee. He will surely violently churn and toss thee like a ball into a large country. <laughs> doing, boing, boing, doing. <clears throat> there, sh there shall thou die. Your bomb shelter didn't take care of you. And there the chariots of thy glory shall be a shame for thy Lord's house. The military of Israel will be where the, en where, where the enemy is. The, the, the greatness of Israel, all the troops of Israel have been taken captive. And your bomb shelter didn't work. I will drive thee from thy station, the treasure, and churn thy state shall he put, pull thee down. Destruction. Your bomb shelter didn't really take care of you. And it shall come to pass in that day that I will call me a servant, Elkiah. He's a type of Christ, the son of Hilkiah. I will clothe him with, with, with thy robe and will strengthen him with thy girdle. Put into the office of the temple. I will commit thy government into his hand. And he shall be a father to the inhabitants of Jerusalem and to the house of Judah. 2 Kings 18, 18. That's 18, 18. That's an interesting number. And the key of the house of David will I lay upon his shoulder, and he shall open. Now this is a prophecy that looks to Jesus Christ. Revelation 3, 7. Go to Revelation 3, 7. This is all prophecy. Three seven. And to the angel of the church of Philadelphia, write these things: saith he that is holy, he that is true, he that has the key of David, he that opens and no man shutteth, and shutteth and no man opens. You 
You're going to show them the cross reference in Isaiah chapter 22? Here it is. Watch. Isaiah 22, 22. A key of the house of David I lay upon his shoulder. He shall not... He shall open, none shall shut. He shall shut, and now sh none shall open. That is Jesus Christ. We're looking at Jesus Christ through the man of Elkayim. I will fasten him as a nail to sure play. Elkayim and Jesus. And he shall be for a glorious throne to his father's house. Of Elkayim. And God the Father. And David. And they shall hang upon him all the glory of his father's house, the offspring and issue, all vessels of small quality, from the vessels of cups, even to all the vessels of flagons, all different sizes. In that day, saith the Lord of hosts, shall the nail that is fastened in the sure place be removed or crucified. And be cut down and fall. And the burden that was upon it shall be cut off. Death, he made his death with the, for the Lord has spoken it. There it is. <laughs> 